this video, we turn good old New Vegas into Mad Max. Take a shot every time I say Mad Max in this video and you're probably gonna die of alcohol poisoning. Let's begin by implementing the most crucial aspect of Mad Max, vehicular combat. To do that, we need one, drivable vehicles for the player, and two, hostile NPC vehicles roaming the wasteland. And guess what, we can add both with mods. First of all, let's grab Mad Max Mojave to inject vehicle NPCs along the roads and dry valleys of the wasteland. I made this mod with simple leveled list edits to Mojave Wildlife which is of course required and if you aren't using this mod already, then go get it now because it makes patrolling the Mojave much more fun by adding many spawn points for creatures and NPCs in the game. My mod Mad Max Mojave does other things as well that I'll mention later in the video. Next let's grab Wheels in the Wasteland which will add a vehicle merchant in the gas station at Novak. He's got 4 different vehicles for sale and there's no limit to how many you can buy. Colin also has gas and repair tools for trade which are very useful especially the thermic lance because it's the only way to repair damaged vehicles. To repair your vehicle you're gonna need scrap metal and all you have to do is point the thermic lance at the vehicle then you'll notice you've lost some scrap metal from your inventory because you've used it on your vehicle and now it's well unhealthy. Also, this mod makes use of all the gas stations in the Mojave by placing a ghoul gas attendant at each of them allowing you to refuel your vehicles at a cost. The mod also adds gunrunner vans traveling the roads for emergence sake. However, this mod won't allow you to install weapons on your vehicles, but Rudy's autos will. With this mod, you also have four different vehicle options and Rudy will sell you gas. He will also upgrade your vehicles, just make sure you park them right here before buying an upgrade. But unfortunately, neither of these mods add any vehicles around the wasteland, you can only buy vehicles. And that's why with my mod Mad Max Mojave, I've hand placed several vehicles around the wasteland for you to find. Please don't forget that all those mods require the frontier and without it, none of this would even be possible. With just those mods combined, Fallout New Vegas feels like a whole new experience. Vehicular combat is satisfying and hilarious at times. <laughs> when fighting tougher enemies, you'll find yourself looking for scrap metal to repair your car, and you don't want to take too long combating those vehicles because gas is a precious resource that you can only scavenge from wrecked cars or buy at high prices. Once you get used to traveling this way, you'll become an addict, always stopping to scavenge for scrap metal and gas to keep your car healthy and full with gasoline. And it's not like you have a choice because the roads are more dangerous than ever now that there are hostile weaponized cars occupying them and they can blow you to pieces pretty quickly. So it's probably not wise for you to travel on foot in New Vegas anymore. For this next section, let's talk about the landscape. The Mad Max wasteland is vast and you can almost feel the heat of the scorched landscape. So first, let's grab NMC's washed out texture pack. This texture pack is very close to vanilla New Vegas and a comparison would be pointless, so I'm not gonna show you one. And now we're gonna need to get rid of all the plant life in New Vegas. But muted mods, why? I like grass, it makes my game look pretty. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Look at the landscape of Mad Max. Do you see any grass? No, everything is dead. So to replicate that, we're gonna use two mods. The performance booster pack and no trees or plants. Let's add Mojave Sandy Desert on top of that and now the landscape looks a lot more detailed and closer to Mad Max. And now there's nothing but sand and rock for as far as the eye can see. And that's a problem because the rocks in New Vegas are shit. Let's make rocks a lot more bearable to look at by using higher poly rocks. And also textures over time for the rock retexture. This texture for the rock suits the aesthetic we're going for a lot better. In Mad Max, it's hard to clearly see things from a distance without binoculars because of all the dust and sand in the air. To create a similar effect, we're gonna use Dusty Distance. There's also a very subtle Heat Haze effect in Mad Max that we can emulate in Fallout New Vegas with the mod Heat Haze. This visual effect is very subtle, so I'm gonna give you some time to notice it. If you wanted to emulate a dust storm weather from Mad Max, there's a mod for Fallout New Vegas called Dusty Weather. This mod will take the weather seen in the mod Dust and injects it into the Mojave and the only problem with this mod is that the weather is constantly like this, all the time. With all those mods together, I think we've actually done it. We recreated Mad Max's landscape in Fallout New Vegas. And I love this aesthetic of a scorched landscape and in my opinion it suits New Vegas a lot better. Now let's move on to the next section of the video. In this section, we're gonna take a look at some Mad Max themed weapons and armors. 
The Raiders and Bandits in the Mad Max series have some of the most post-apocalyptic looking outfits and armors. There's a lot of diversity and creativity that went into designing them, and Fallout lacks diversity and creativity in the outfits department regarding the fiends and raiders in general. Let's use Nightmare Fiends, a junkie overhaul. This mod adds a lot of brand new awesome armors for the fiends of New Vegas, making them look a lot more intimidating and post-apocalyptic. I thought because we're gonna be using the Frontier anyway, why don't we use some of the coolest armors and weapons in it? And with my mod Mad Max Mojave, I've injected many fitting weapons and armors to a new raider faction I created called the Gearheads. This idea for a new faction came to me when I had to add the vehicle NPCs to New Vegas. I wanted the appearance of vehicles in the wasteland to make a little bit more sense. So basically the Gearheads, as their name suggests, have learned the art of making vehicles work again. And I wanted them to seem like this faction that could make a weapon out of anything, so I gave them most of the homemade weapons made for the Frontier. And I made it so the better looking weapons are only wielded by the leaders. I also wanted a way for me to add jerry cans to NPCs in the game, but I didn't want to mess around with the other leveled lists. You will naturally encounter and come across the gearheads by just traveling the roads of New Vegas. I've used the mod Mojave Raiders to replace the Vipers in the leveled lists with the gearheads. So Mojave Raiders is gonna be a requirement for Mad Max Mojave, and I chose Mojave Raiders specifically because I thought everybody would have it installed on their game by now. Now let's move on to adding even more weapons. In Mad Max Fury Road, explosive spears called Thundersticks were used, and there are a few mods in the Nexus adding those throwable weapons to New Vegas, but this is the one we're using, Mad Max Thundersticks by Ranark. You can obtain a Thunderstick by only crafting it at the workbench. We're gonna need tin cans, some throwing spears, dynamite from Easy Pete of course, and a sensor module. This is the most fun throwing weapon mod I've ever used. Just take a look at this unbelievable trick shot I just pulled. Aside from the iconic sawed-off shotgun, Max would use any type of homemade weapon he can get his hands on. Let's get some homemade weapons for New Vegas with the homemade weapons pack. This mod does exactly what you think it does. It has a few homemade weapons with a single attachment for each, and all that can be only obtained if crafted at a workbench. All the guns added fit right in with the theme of Mad Max, especially this little Tech 9 looking pipe SMG. To craft these, we're gonna need some scrap metal, tin cans, duct tape, and scrap electronics. Head over to a workbench and voila! I also feel like Max would use pretty much anything that can be used as a weapon. And in Fallen in Vegas, a lot of the miscellaneous items actually look like they can be used as weapons. So we're gonna use MISC items used as weapons. This mod allows you to use certain items in the miscellaneous category as weapons. Have you ever wanted to beat the shit out of this guy with his own guitar so he can shut the fuck up? Well now you can. Tired of the stupid NCR president's speech? Beat the shit out of him with a microphone. Sunny Smiles beat you at a pool game? Just grab a pool ball and throw it at her dog. Now this right here is what I call an immersive mod. Did I mention that you could also ram enemies with your car? And use jerry cans to make a big boom. Now that we're done with all of that, let's move on to the next section, the gameplay part of this video. Let's begin with the biggest aspect of Mad Max's gameplay, Scrap. In Mad Max, Scrap is very important. It's the resource you use to do pretty much everything from fixing your car, to upgrading Max with skills and everything in between. To make Scrap just as important in New Vegas, it's gonna take a handful of mods. First, the Scrap-O-Matic. We'll add a Scrap Converting Machine at the 188 that will give you 5 XP points and 10 bottle caps for each Scrap Metal you put into it. This will make finding scrap metal that much more satisfying. Next, we need alternative repair. This mod will change how you approach repairing your equipment in New Vegas by making it so that you have to scavenge for miscellaneous items to craft repair parts for specific items. Or you can buy repair parts from vendors. Every weapon and armor class has its own repair parts requirement. And now to make repairing weapons more important, let's get increased weapon jamming. As this mod will make it so weapons of low condition will jam when firing your weapon, not just after reloading it. Then let's get the craft a mod that will allow the player to access crafting menus anywhere anytime from their Pip-Boy. Because that's how it is in Mad Max, you can basically upgrade your car while you're out in the wasteland, you don't have to be back at your headquarters. Next, loot all cars will turn wrecked vehicles in the game into containers you can scavenge for scrap, and thanks to Mad Max Mojave, the Frontier's jerry cans can also be found within those containers. Realistic movement will make you and NPCs move slower, which will make you more reliant on traveling in a car, and in turn making it that much more important for you to use scrap on your vehicle to keep it in good condition. With all those mods, junk items are gonna be way more valuable to you than ever. We're gonna need some help while driving around in our vehicles, so let's grab GIP Minimap. 
Now for animations, we're gonna grab three mods. Solid Project, Just Assorted Mods, and Animated Ingestibles. We need Solid Project for Ledge Climbing, which is present in Mad Max. And also for the Dodge Roll, because you could also do that in Mad Max. And we need Jam for the Bullet Time, Loot Menu, and Vanilla Sprint. Because again, all of those features are also available in the game Mad Max. And we're gonna need animated ingestibles because every action is animated in Mad Max. And finally, we're gonna need universal water bottling because in Mad Max you could refill your canteen, and in New Vegas, you cannot. But with this mod, you can refill your Vault 13 canteen. And now it's time for the final section, player homes. Max doesn't really have a home, he's a wanderer after all. That said, he does have a few safe houses in the game, and all the player homes we're gonna install are gonna follow a post-apocalyptic theme. And all those locations definitely feel like someplace Max would settle. But this one is a little different, it heavily resembles one of the safe houses in the actual game. Eugene's Observatory is an old Brotherhood of Steel facility where they conducted research on the FEV. I chose this player home because it's just so cool driving your vehicle up the road and into the facility, it truly feels like an actual headquarters. But to gain access to it, we first need to find a secret tunnel, then defeat a few bombs and collect the keys from them. I'll be leaving a list of bonus mods in the description if you're interested. Now I know what you're all thinking, is all this stable and will I be encountering any issues? Yes, this is stable and I haven't had any crashes or performance problems. And yes, there are a few issues with a mod or two. No trees or plants and the performance booster pack for some reason break the ghost town gunfight quest because you won't be able to talk to Sunny Smiles. How do we fix this? Just install those mods after you leave Doc Mitchell's house and everything should work fine. Or just don't install those mods, or any mods that you don't like in this list for that matter. And if you have any questions or need any help setting all this up, just leave a comment down below and I'll reply as fast as I can. 